Did you recently get one of the new really powerful GPUs and notice that in your case it's running really hot? I've been doing a lot of testing with heat, and by testing I mean playing Cyberpunk 2077 maxed out. I'm going to tell you some things to make it cooler, as well as what to expect in terms of thermals for your GPU. Let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology here. Today we're going to talk about GPUs, thermals, how they relate to your case and your environment, and most importantly, what it means for the actual user experience. That's really what I want to get at here. When you're sitting down on your chair and you're doing testing, and of course by testing I mean playing Cyberpunk 2077 or whatever game you like to play, you don't want the fans on your GPU to be going crazy, heating up your CPU, as well as just thermal throttling so that way you get less frames per second. I'm going to tell you a couple of you know, important and basic points that you should be aware of, especially if you have a very high performing GPU like this. Now, this seems to be even of more paramount importance today. The previous generation, let's say the 20 series GPUs, but especially the triple fan third party coolers seem to run significantly cooler than what I've been seeing with the 3000 series GPU, as well as the AMD 6000 series GPUs. First, let's talk about a few GPUs and their coolers. Now, of course, water cooling your GPU is not going to be for everybody. And in fact, at this point, it's almost for nobody. The water box are slowly starting to come out depending on the model GPU that you have, like for the RTX 3000 series, for the AMD GPUs. So they're definitely starting to come out, but they're still limited and some GPUs don't even have a water block. That's going to bring me to my first GPU where I kind of got the idea for this. That's going to be the EVGA for the Win 3 Ultra, the 3090. Now, as you guys know, this can have a custom BIOS up to 500 watts, but still being stock, it can still pull almost up to 450 watts. That's on the single GPU. That's pretty extraordinary if you consider that something like a 2080 Ti was way, way under around 250 watts. And of course, the Founders Edition 3090 will be under around 350 watts compared to this. But this is still a huge cooler with three fans. First, I actually had it in SLI, which of course you guys know, aside from being a bad idea in general, is an even worse idea in terms of thermal and that's going to showcase the first point. You need to have adequate airflow underneath your GPU. Any GPU design that you have that's like a triple fan or a double fan, if you choke that air off, especially putting a second GPU on it, or it doesn't even have to be a second GPU, it could be maybe a case that has a, a little bit of like a shallow depth of field between the GPU and the bottom of the case. If you don't have any airflow going on there, you're going to have a lot of thermal issues just because the GPU will not be able to pull enough fresh air cool in order to keep the thermals check that bay. Now, this GPU in that situation would reach almost 82 to 83 Celsius, which is pretty crazy for a big cooler like this, a triple fan design, even with the watts that it's putting out. Like a 1080 Ti at stock, if you had the blower style, would kind of reach 84C and stay there. So to see a triple fan design like this, get up that high. Certainly it shows you just how much power this GPU is putting through. Now, even when I remove the second GPU in the case that has better airflow, like the case that I have back here, and put a bottom fan here, of course the thermals will improve, but it's still going from like 72 to 76 Celsius. That's playing, of course, Cyberpunk 2077 maxed out at 4K. Hey guys, so I'm playing Cyberpunk 2077. This is 4K. GPU stays pretty much around 74C. Now, this is with these fans here in the front, like they're at their full speed. Um, the side panel's open, it's really hot. We have the exhaust fan, we have fans up here as well. This 3090, of course, does put out a lot more power than normal just because it has more watts, but these GPUs get incredibly hot. Even in this case with it open as 74C, I've seen this GPU go all the way above 80C. Let's say if the fans are not that high and if this is closed. So definitely a lot of case flow issues to be concerned with with the new generation of these GPUs just because they run so hot compared to even the previous generation. Previous generation of these big three slot coolers certainly seem to perform a lot cooler than this. They used to be probably more in like the 60 Celsius range instead of going all the way up to the mid 70s. Of course, the 3090 is going to be a special case, especially this one. Like I said before, the power that it's putting out is really unprecedented in the GPU world. So we understand why it's putting out that heat. Being able to manage it is a little bit trickier. That's why I'm using it as an example. I know not that many people will have a 3090, especially a 4 the winter. 
three, but it's going to be one of the worst case scenarios for a GPU like this throwing hot air in your case. So I have it right back here. And basically what I did was in front of the case, and now this is going to be the Be Quiet 802. And one interesting thing about this case, it has a mesh front panel, something like a Fractal Design Meshify or something like that will also work. An H500M, the Cooler Master case also has a really nice front panel, but this one specifically has fantastic airflow. Typically Be Quiet cases will have a more constricted front panel in order to keep noise in. But in this case, they decided to go with the mesh and that's great in our scenario here because it's gonna allow a lot more air to flow through. And I have 240 millimeter fans right in the front and then another 140 millimeter fan in the back. Basically that's gonna be cool air coming in the front, hot air exhausting in the back. And on top, this has a 360 millimeter AIO. And of course, all the hot air is gonna rise. And of course, in this configuration, you are gonna be warming up your CPU a little bit because all that hot air is passing through the top fans and the radiator. But in this case, even though this actually has an Intel 10 980XC, which is an 18 core CPU, the CPU actually runs fairly cool that it doesn't really make that big of a difference, especially in gaming. I'm primarily concerned with the thermals of the GPU because that's really what's out of control here. If I was concerned with the CPU, you could make the case that you can put that AIO in the front. That way, all the fresh air goes in. The GPU doesn't affect the CPU. You are going to be putting in a little more warm air in the case, a little more restricted because you will have a radiator here as opposed to having just fans there feeding that GPU cool air. So if this works on this GPU, the 3090, of course, it's going to work on pretty much every other GPU. That's going to be pretty much the basics of what you want in an airflow case. And it definitely does improve thermals. And most certainly, it definitely does improve thermals by a pretty decent amount. Having the fans on even at like a medium speed where they're barely audible, you will see sometimes three to four degrees Celsius as opposed to if it was like closed off. And of course, the more you get heat soaked and the more you gain, that difference can even increase a little bit if you don't have these fans with proper airflow. So to summarize, using the worst case scenario, which is probably something like this, the EVGA 3090 for the Win 3, just make sure you have proper airflow. New GPUs are still gonna run pretty hot, but if you have the proper airflow, you are gonna be saving yourself several degrees Celsius on the GPU itself. That's gonna mean less fans on the GPU itself ramping up for a better user experience, as well as the GPU not thermal throttling and giving you all of the performance that you can yank out of it. And of course, if you move into smaller cases like Mini ITX, you're gonna to have to really think about the airflow path and make sure to put your GPU in the proper position. For example, a case I recently built in the Silverstone SG14. The way that you mount the GPU is vertical, but you do have a perforated side panel. I'd be very careful doing a vertical GPU with like a tempered glass panel. That's going to restrict all of the airflow on your GPU, unless that's really recessed towards the back of your case and you can put a lot of fans towards it. And of course, anytime you can aim fans at the actual GPU, that's going to bring in cool air right at the GPU and that's going to give you better thermal performance and probably better noise levels as well as everything spinning doesn't have to go at very high speeds. And of course, there were other ways in software that you may be able to control the temperatures of your GPU. That's going to be a scope for a different video, things like undervolting and doing things in software. I think first, you really primarily have to look at the GPU itself and the physical environment that it's in. Optimize the airflow. Make sure that it's not too restrictive. Make sure you have fans properly intaking and exhausting. And that way, you're first going to set the grounds for a much better performance and thermal flow. Later on, if the thermals are still bad and you're not happy with what's going on, then you can start looking at the different software solutions and undervolting and things of that nature. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video.